This video is brought to you by StarCharge, the largest EV charging manufacturer in the world. They are also a provider of residential and commercial battery storage with microgrid solutions. Hello and welcome to another Out of Spec Reviews video and welcome to the start of the hill climb of I-70 here in Colorado. That can only mean one thing. Yes, it's time for a hogback driver assistance test, this time on our Kia EV9. What is the driver assistance test I'm referring to? Well, a couple of years ago, we started a, as standardized as we can make it in the real world, a review area of driver assistance systems. We look at the safety function of them, we look at the driving benefit of them, and we score them based on how well they perform on one of the toughest sections of American Highway. If a driver assistance system can work here, it can pretty much work anywhere. And it's been some time since we've done one of these and we've compiled some cars. You're gonna see more hogbacks coming soon. And this time we've brought along our long-term review Kia EV9 to run through the hogback challenge. This car, have to give a shout out as always to Kia in Fort Collins. Fort Collins Kia is our local Northern Colorado Kia dealership that supports out of spec by giving us a long-term car for six months to make videos for you guys. So shout out to them for letting us run this and testing the highway drive assist or highway driving assistant two that's inside our Kia EV9. Let's go evaluate fully the driver assistant system in our Kia EV9. <laughs> Well, you join me and Jordan and Max to run a few cars through the hogback today. So this will be the first of a few videos coming over the next few weeks on this channel. And well, it's only fitting that we run our own EV9 in this test. Now, Jordan has spent a lot of time with this vehicle as has Max and as have I, and this is truly one of the best family electric road trippers, maybe the best family electric road tripper that's on the market. It has a very flat charging curve, 200 kilowatts, all the way up to pretty much 80%. It's very efficient for being a box on wheels. And of course, you can fit an entire family in here comfortably and your luggage. So Jordan, the driver assistance system on this is so important because this is the vehicle you're gonna do miles in. That's right, it's it's killer. And it comes based like a standard on the base model. This is the light long range, still gets HDA2. So it's not something you have to buy the GT line to get. Right, I like how they package. They know that this thing and this particular spec is the longest range spec. This is the one to do miles in. So they give you all of the driver assistance, the entire suite included in the EV9, which is not a cheap vehicle. This is still $60,000 for the base spec with the big battery, but, uh, and they go up into the high 70s, right, Jordan? Yep, 78, 79, yeah. Yeah, it gets expensive, but it's a lot of vehicle for the money, and we've truly loved having this one. So again, shout out to Kia, Fort Collins. Fort Collins Kia will ship you any new electric Kia, at least if you live in the 48 contiguous states, at no charge, up to $1,000 of shipping credits, which usually gets it there. So if you live in Florida, they'll sell you one at sticker and ship it to you at no cost. Support the, I guess, dealerships that support out of spec. That's pretty cool. Most dealers kind of suck. This one doesn't. I'm pretty pleased with that. Any thoughts, Jordan? Yeah, they're great. They <laughs> yeah, they us. are. We love them. It's a good relationship. <laughs> it is. It's really, really awesome. So let's talk EV9 driver assistance suite in this one. We have a single camera up on the windshield. And we have a radar down here, which I believe is actually heated. And we have ultrasonic sensors around the vehicle as well for close proximity, but as well as rear cross traffic alert and a few other things. Jordan, what is the difference between HDA1 and HDA2? You know, I don't actually know off the top of my head. So I know for <laughs> sure one thing is it's lane changes. Yes, this does auto lane changing. This does auto lane changes, and it will also adjust the speed limits and has like a thing, but I think that's pretty much it. HDA2 seems, in my experience, to be a little bit more competent on lane centering, but it could just be anecdotal based on the vehicle I'm in because we've run other highway drive assistant tests in this hogback and they've actually performed terribly. We did the Santa Fe, yeah, which yeah. I think had HDA1 maybe. Uh, it did not do lane changing and it did decently, but you're right, it definitely struggled in some parts. And we, the notably, it wouldn't tell us when it was turning itself off. Right, so they had a major <laughs> safety flaw, which I believe this still has. Yes. Which is, 
we'll we'll show you guys in a minute but if you're driving down the road and let's say you die we always simulate the i die behind the wheel test can it at least protect you from crashing into a tree or driving off the road and what this system does is it's one of the very few systems on the market that separates adaptive cruise control from steering so if it doesn't detect your hands on the steering wheel which we'll get into this this actually has a capacitive steering wheel different than other systems from hyundai kia genesis that we've tested if it doesn't detect your hands on the steering it will shut off the steering and it'll just go straight it beeps at you does everything but it doesn't slow down the vehicle at the same time it just goes full send off the road so pretty not great we'll see if they've updated it with this one we made sure it has all the newest software updates by the way this vehicle does support over the air software updates and i've already gotten like five updates since we've gotten it it's awesome yeah it's pretty great so uh, in terms of sensors again single camera single radar the one thing that this vehicle is missing it doesn't have to do with the driver assistance system per se but if you get a higher spec vehicle you can actually get the uh, blind spot cameras that show up in the display this does not have that you also get smart park and smart park smart park or actually smart they call it something different with kia does this have smart park Nope. But I can move it from the key? No, nope. I can't. Oh, I must that, have been the GT the live. premium feature thing, which oh. I would love to have. Honestly, driving this thing without a 360 camera is kind of cumbersome. Yeah, I agree. It's a big vehicle. Having a 360 cam would be nice. You have to go land trim to get that. <laughs> oh, the land trim gives yeah. you that. Okay. <laughs> I don't see much of a benefit of like summoning the vehicle forward and back from yeah, the key. Yeah, very minimal reason for that. I, it's not worth spending any money for it, but if it has it, cool. This is a large vehicle. Uh, again, just some specs on this one, 100 kilowatt hour battery pack, pretty much usable, single motor, 201 horsepower. <laughs> Are we gonna have enough power to climb this hill? Just about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and there's three of us in here. So this is one of the most, I don't wanna say underpowered, but slowest EVs I've ever tested. Yeah. It's great from like zero to 40, but up here on the hill climb, I think we're gonna be using hard throttle. Should be interesting. To show you guys around back, I believe there are some radars in the rear as well, because it has cross traffic and a few other safety functions. But I love how Kia pretty much gives you the entire safety suite included in the vehicle. And of course, inside, if you guys just wanna have a quick glance, if you're not familiar, captain's chairs in this one, third row is huge, USB-C ports everywhere, cup holders everywhere. It's like the ultimate family hauler that's electric, I think, until we get Escalade IQ or something crazy big like that. So let's uh, run everyone through the testing procedures and then we will uh, run the test, of course. So Jordan, remind me, because it's been a while since we've done a hog bag. Yeah. What the heck do we do? I know we have a scoring system and we can you know, basically benchmark this against other vehicles, but then there's also the subjective component, which is our feedback. Yes, so there is a scoring system, which we can actually show on the screen as well, but we award points based on what the vehicle actually comes with from the factory as a start. So it has a chance to win some things up front, such as, in this case, automatic lane changing and stuff like that. And capacitive wheel. Capacitive wheel, like those give bonus points, more or less. And then on the actual drive is where we actually deduct points from issues. Right. And uh, one other thing we test, like you said earlier, is, uh, you know, what if you die behind the wheel? What does the car do? Or you have a stroke or something, some urgent, like, a, a medical issue right um what actually happens so we start with testing that with this little side road right here the frontage road right we see what that does and there's also some points associated with that then we take it up and back which i think i have to remember the miles now it's like 20 miles or something it's I thought not, it was 15 15 up 15 one, back yeah i think so that's 30 miles yeah 30 miles lots of elevation <laughs> yeah. lots of corners i forget all the stats over 2,000 feet elevation gain and of course we basically regain that on the way back down we have but enough charge in this thing yeah we got 35 percent we're fine yeah <laughs> plenty okay great well uh let's load in let's go run through the scoring system we'll run through the safety and then we'll run the test. Great. Jordan, before we start this test, let's set up the EV9 with all the correct settings because one thing um, this car has are so many options for everything, not just driver assistance, but I love it. It's totally customizable. So let's come in here. We'll go over here to setup. We'll come to vehicle and then driver assistance. Within driver assistance, we have all of these different menus we can go into. So first I'm gonna do driving convenience. And the first option we get is smart cruise control, which this is really cool. Uh, it has some AI built into HDA2 vehicles that will automatically learn how you drive, your style, and then try and make the cruise control drive more like you do. And this is actually saved to the user profile of the vehicle. So if you drive differently than me, uh, you'll hit curbs and mine won't. <laughs> 
I don't know, you know, just, just kind of joking, but of course it does seem to be pretty interesting. And then there's a way to adjust, you know, sort of reaction speed, acceleration, and distance manually. I'm actually gonna reset that, and I just did before we did this clip, to get the baseline function of the system. But it is cool that you can dial in every bit of how the system operates, even more so than like Tesla's FSD beta or supervised now, which only gives you chill, assertive, and I can't remember the third one. Yeah, I don't either. Yeah, but uh, yeah, cool that there's so many options. Okay, the next one, driving safety. We love this. So this is a forward collision situation with different timing forward cross traffic safety, which is very cool, forward and side safety, lane safety, uh, and this automatically assists with steering to help prevent the vehicle from leaving the lane. We'll show you how this doesn't actually work in just a moment. And blind spot safety and safe exit lets you know if like someone's walking up to the vehicle or driving up to the vehicle when you're about to open the door. Really quite a bit of cool stuff. Driver attention warning. Uh, this is a really cool setting that when you're sitting in like the Starbucks drive-through is how I use it. And you know, if it, randomly the car moves ahead and you're texting or whatever, um, it dings at you when the, when the car in front of you starts to pull away. So you're not getting honked at in the line or at a light. I think it's really cool. The, the next thing I wish this would do would actually ding at you when the light goes from red to green, uh, Teslas do that, that would be a nice addition. The speed limit is very cool. Something we take into account during this test is the speed limit assist, and this will actually adjust the vehicle set speed based off of what the vehicle thinks the speed limit is. Notice I say that, not necessarily a speed limit of the road. We're gonna check to see if it recognizes the speed limit of the road throughout this test. And then if you wanna go plus five or plus 10 over the speed limit, it lets you dial in uh, both above and below up to 10 miles an hour above or below the speed limit. Really fantastic option as well. When it comes to parking safety, you have rear cross traffic safety, park distance warning, and you can even have uh, rear view options as well in the camera. And just to show you what that looks like here, I can put the vehicle in reverse and you can see here's the rear view camera. Here are the couple different views, sort of a trailer hitch view, a wide view that fills up the whole screen, and then this overlaid with some parking sensor data. This vehicle is a fairly base vehicle, so it's not equipped with the uh, surround view. So that's how we're gonna have it set up for this. I've reset the system to go into its base profile, which uh, so many options, really cool, love that. So let's now get through the scoring system. Max has the computer back there and we have a Google doc that you'll overlay when you edit this to walk us through. So Max, walk us through all of the available points that this can earn ahead of the test, starting with each category. Yeah, so first let me just introduce the categories we have. There's the driver interface, which basically affects the kind of like monitoring systems to tell is someone at the wheel, will the system disengage? Then we've got the automatic functions, which are basically the feature content, like adapting the speed limits, automatically changing lanes, etc. We've got warnings in case the driver is unresponsive or dies or something happens. We've got the actual drive where we'll take away points for uh, takeovers or disengagements. And then we'll have our subjective editor's input and this uh, we can also change the score slightly with, with some of our points. Yeah, sounds great. So let's start with the top section and let's run through each point and give it a score that it's gonna start with. The first on the driver interface is the capacitor wheel and the Kia EV9 does have this, so that's plus five. Great, what's next? Next up is driver safety eye tracking. There's no eye tracking. We don't give a check here. No hands-free eye tracking either. Uh, it is not limited to pre-mapped highways, which is sweet. So we can uh, leave that unchecked. No points lost there. Right, because we'll actually pull away points yeah. if it's limited to pre-mapped. Yep. And then gauge cluster showing cars around. I believe it doesn't do that, even though it kind of almost looks like on the uh, screen there where it's you know showing your following distance that it might do that. It doesn't have any kind of like vision representation to the driver of what's around you. Right, absolutely. And we'll double check that throughout the drive and adjust if it does happen to show other cars. Yep. Some of the automatic function points include the adapting the speed limits, which as we've shown you in the settings, this has, so plus five points there, uh, and it does have offset, so no points lost. Adapt right, because we pull points away if it goes just to the speed limit, but you can't say, most people drive five or 10 over. Yeah. Especially in the US, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it, it does give you that option, which is great. The adaptive system also has aggressiveness. In fact, a lot of parameters as we saw, so plus two points there. Uh, it's separate from driving mode, as far as we can tell. So plus one there. 
the lane changes in Highway Driving Assist 2 here are automatic, so plus five points. However, they do require user input. I think you have to signal first. Yep. So no points gained for that. We're gonna show the safety video now, and then we'll score it right after. So watch what happens when you drive down the road and you pay no attention, you die, you have a stroke, you're unresponsive for whatever reason. It's a real safety critical event. And we're gonna show you what happens in the Kia EV9, what it doesn't do to keep you safe. It totally fails this. So I'm gonna set us at 35 miles an hour on the full driver assistance suite. We're now going to see what happens if I don't pay attention and touch the wheel. So see how long we can go essentially before it gives us warnings and what happens after we get the warnings. There is a biker here. I would like to move over a bit for him, but there's also a car on coming. That's okay. I think Max, would you have been mad, Mr. Cyclist? I think that's enough from, okay. if we were to like an Escalade or something really big and wide, maybe that would have, you know, run me to the side of the road. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it didn't feel comfortable, but Got it. We have a rare opportunity where we can actually run this. And my impression of this system is it really does go a long time without asking you to take over. So, yeah. And we should mention no eye tracking. This is all down to no capacitive input on the wheel. There's our first warning. Keep hands on steering wheel. Yeah, no eye tracking or outside influence here. This is just a capacitive wheel. And here comes a Kia Telluride, actually. Uh, pretty cool to see both of these together. We have a ding. It says keep hands on steering wheel. Really curious to see if they fix this problem. It is still dinging. Man, this thing goes a while. <laughs> still dinging at us. Oh, there we go. Lane follow assist deactivated, but we're still on cruise control. And look at this. It would just put us right into Whoa, a wall. Barrier. So steering just let go without warning. Yep, that's what these systems do. It's so sketchy. Wow. So sketchy. They should brake, hazards, horn, pull the seatbelt, yeah. and, and like stop. Don't do that. No driver inputs, no seatbelt yank, no shake, yeah, no horn lights. Yeah, we'll go through this stuff in a minute, but like, Jordan. Not good. <laughs> that's That's dangerous. Yeah. And you can also, with this car, set it to just follow its lane keep assist to yeah, and, which I have on. Yep, and you can actually do like no cruise control, just lane keep assist. And the same type of thing happens where it will just depart the lane. A lot of people had that issue on the test drive or the press drive. Yeah, that's, that's bad. <laughs> so what we just saw is that it didn't yank the seatbelt. It didn't have any kind of haptics or shaking. There was not even a trigger of the horn. No hazard lights came on. Uh, it didn't bring us to a complete stop. It didn't uh, even slow down. It didn't slow down <laughs> at all. Full send straight it, uh, So steering let go without warning. We demerit five points for that. And then it didn't pull over to the shoulder, though to be fair, no system we've seen really does that. Right, so, so it's like you're already in a bad situation. Let's just end it, is how it feels. Yeah, they really should just keep with the lane forever. Until... Yeah, just stay with the lane. But then I guess people would abuse that. But I just think it's, you know, we're, we're talking a safety critical event. Someone that's not necessarily relying on the system, but is using it and becomes unresponsive. The system should do like every other system on the market does mm -hmm. and not just throw you into a wall. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it has all of these lane departure stuff that's separate from the lane centering and the lane. I don't even know. Lots of settings here. None of those kicked in. Yeah. No emergency thing kicked in. It just stayed on adaptive cruise. I'm surprised years later. This is four years of this system. I've been complaining <laughs> about this. I, I don't know why they haven't fixed it. Yeah, that's not great. Anyway, sorry. So let's score all of that. So, uh, so safety, it did very poorly in. Yeah, so safety did poorly and it lost five points. However, for the automatic functions, it did decently. Uh, so there we added up five, seven, eight, uh, I believe, yeah, 13. So that puts us at seven points. Then we have another five for the capacitive wheel. Um, so that gives us 12 points overall. The capacitive wheel is five points? Mm -hmm. It is. Wow, that, that's heavy. That's a big deal. Okay. We, we, love our, we love our capacitive wheels here at other spec. I don't remember giving it such a high score. <laughs> is it true? Yeah. Wow. Okay. Well, maybe one day we'll adjust these scoring. Yeah. But yeah, so sorry, eight points overall because yeah, 13 minus five for steering, letting go. And then uh, that's eight and then plus five for capacitive wheels. So that brings it to 13 before we get to the drive. And wasn't there an editor's input already at this point? Yeah, we do like that it has the uh, leaving vehicle departure alert, which basically kind of prevents you from that beep situation where you're on your phone and someone honks because you didn't leave. Uh, you didn't know someone left in front of you. Yeah. So it has that. 
do we want to give yeah, plus so one? Yeah, so we'll give it plus one right off the bat, because okay. I'd like to know the starting points. Yep, so 14 points to begin with. Okay, great. So let's uh, kick on the rest of the cameras and run this test. Guys, just want to show you a couple uh, baseline features on this vehicle. First of all, if I push and hold the lane button on the steering wheel, I can shut everything off. Uh, and that would be like no lane assistant. It just, you know, is normal car. Pretend there's not even a camera on the front of this thing. I can push and hold the button on the steering wheel to enable lane keeping assist, which is different than lane departure. And, uh, or excuse me, it's different than lane centering. I don't know exactly all the terms, but this will let us basically hit a line like this and steer in and ping pong as you go down the road. So a lot of people don't want active steering, but if you have some trajectory to the left, you know, it'll push you back in so you don't cross any lines. Then a unique feature of highway drive assist in every Hyundai Kia Genesis with this system is I can actually turn on auto steer lane centering without adaptive cruise control. You can see I'm actually touching the brake pedal and now we have the line with lane centering wherever you go. And I actually use this quite a bit just around town driving. I mean, I always keep my hands on the wheel, but it just kind of goes where it wants to go and it allows for in-lane repositioning so I can push it one way or the other. And then you can see it locks right back on without having to do anything. It's kind of cool. It's unique in the segment. I don't know any other system that really does this. And I'm uh, really curious what you guys think. I know a lot of Hyundai Kia Genesis owners love this feature and a lot of people never use it, but I think it's nice to have it and I can control my own speed driving around. It's easy to disable because it's independent. I've actually used it in a Kia Soul on the Lincoln Tunnel where like, you know, it's a very like stop and go situation where I don't like cruise control. So I could just focus on the pedal and let the car steer. Yeah, makes sense. I use it just like that as well. You're Florida, aren't you? This is, this is <laughs> maximum acceleration in our EV9. It has to be the slowest EV on sale. It's up there. Nissan Leaf base. I okay. think it's faster slowest, than a Leaf. Slowest EV from this decade, for sure. Um, zero to 60 and 6. But the point. Leaf is still sold new. You can get a 2020. Oh, I meant to say, I think the Leaf is faster than this. Really? I think it is, yeah. Is this 7.9 seconds, 0 to 60? This is like 8 seconds, 0 to 60. Oh. This, yeah. <laughs> Telluride would definitely win. So, as we're on our way, and it's actually dinging at me that you unbuckled Max, even That's from like, the back seat. Yeah. What did you do? Uh, I lost our phones. Oh no. <laughs> Max, Max has got a situation back there. You better buckle up, because there's people <laughs> pulling out right in front of us. Put your seatbelt on. It's okay. They saw that this was a light, long-range model, so they knew they had time to make sure maneuver. <laughs> <laughs> what an awesome car with a pretty lacking powertrain. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the GT, yeah, you could get a GT line. GT yeah, those line are fast. is awesome. And the GT is coming, which will be crazy. Yeah, you don't need that. In the case GT you line. want to track your three-row SUV. Yeah, exactly. And then when there's the Ionic 7 version of this, or an Ionic 9, they'll have the Ionic 9N, and that will be even crazier. <laughs> it's drift mode in your big <laughs> <laughs> All, All right, about. well, I'm just trying to get us to the traffic light at hard throttle. Just hold on tight, we're going through. So that's full send, wow. everything we got. So I'm going to kick on the system. We need to get to the speed limit. I'm wide open by the way, but by the time we get to the side. So here we are, I'm locked in, steering is on. We need to get in the lane. Looks like it recognized the speed limit. Yep, so it's on nav now, and so steering is on. Nice. And already a minus one, we've hit the line and it shut off steering. Nope. <laughs> so this is one of those things, this system is great on straight roads, but we always find here in the mountains, it never does that well. And actually it's doing pretty well here after that initial mess It did give a warning, right? Uh, no, it shut off right oh, when so it did. That's minus it. three points. Uh, it, I actually don't think so. I think it was hit a line. Yeah. So that just you had to take over. Let's just do a yeah. minus one because yeah. a driver takeover. Okay. When it shuts off without warning, it's like doesn't even attempt to steer. Yeah. And it's just like <laughs> just going gone. straight. So Max, walk us through the what we can deduct. If you still have your microphone running back there, if you could walk us through what the the deductions are throughout the drive today. Yeah, the major deductions are driver takeover for safety, which is our kind of like base deduction. That's minus one point. We've got auto disengagement with a warning, which is minus two points. Uh, and then we've got the worst possible case, a disengagement without any warning, minus three. That's and right. I think that's what we have issues with the Santa Cruz. That's what it was, the Hyundai Santa Cruz. Initiating an auto lane change here. I've just clicked the turn signal to the point of resistance and it has it accelerates before it crosses the path of the vehicle in front, which is great. It doesn't just wait and then accelerate. And it is showing vehicles on the screen. Yeah, it does show other vehicles okay. as little blobs. So we'll add points for that. Yeah, we have to add some points. Little for ambiguous that. blobs. 
it's so, funny. Some other manufacturers will put like you know forward. Everything's an escape. <laughs> will it do a lane change mid corner? It's attempting. Nice. Oh, wow. Good. Smooth as could be, and that's a tough situation. We're not seeing ping ponging really. It's this is a pretty good system. After living with this car for months now, although are we about to hit this line? We're close. We're close, but no, it did it. Uh, oh wait, set speed limit changed to 55. Oh, I just did it. Yeah, okay. It dinged too to tell you, which is nice. Nice. Uh, after living with this car for the last few months, I have to say I really love the driver assistance on the highway. For the straight line, the Kansas cruise, if you will, this, you can set it, forget it, rock and roll, just keep a light touch on the wheel because it's capacitive. And it, you know, some capacitive wheels have hot spots. Yeah. And this just kind of feels like it's very uniform. Wherever you're touching it, it's pretty good. So very impressed overall. See, the speed limits are wrong here. Oh yeah, now it's thinking. Now it's 65, but it, we're about to pass this 55 sign. And there we go. Now it's going back. <laughs> so your efficiency is not going to be good. <laughs> but this is always a constantly moving and changing environment. Now we're coming back to 65. Let's see what it does here. Is there a maximum limit? Oh, did it miss it? It might have missed it. Granted, it was on the other side of the road, but still. Yeah, I would say it missed the speed limit yeah. in that case. It definitely is 65, so I'm going to raise this up. And it's weird because that's a temporary construction situation, so it should have GPS knowledge that it's 65 here from here now. A Jag I-Pace. Nice. Wow, someone has one. So cool. I met a dude the other day that bought one for 28 grand. Ooh. Okay. It's a lot of car for the money, but I think the yeah, how reliability... Much, how much are they new? 80, 90. Wow. Yeah. Maybe they've lowered. They haven't been selling about. Yeah, I think <laughs> Waymo bought more than anyone else. Yeah. They have like seven. They kept them alive. <laughs> All right. Let's see what happens here in the construction zone. We're still in a 65, which I think the intention is for this to be 55, but the latest sign definitely was a 65 zone. Yeah. Uh, you know, EV9, of course, is quiet. It's comfortable. Rides very well. It's one of those just awesome road tripping vehicles, even under these extreme pothole, sort of broken road situations. And it's all just spring damp, like uh, suspension. We don't have the air like a lot of other bigger electric SUVs have. That's right. Yeah, someone told me that the EV9 GT line we assumed had rear air yeah. is rear hydraulic. Yeah, it is. So I'm going to initiate another lane change so i've just clicked the turn signal to the point of resistance and it does speed up right away like gives you a little push like oh we're about to pass someone it's really smooth and it's been good at um catching you know i've had times where i started a lane change it would not go for it and then realize oh someone's coming up so it like goes back over waits and then it goes it's just been really natural that's awesome. And we always try and drive in the rightmost lane of this test just because there's offshoots of the highway and some systems. I think we'll see it in your Polestar Max get confused and try and take exits. Yeah. I know my Polestar does that. It happened to me today, actually. And even here, it's just dead straight, even though the right lane was broken and it you know, exited to the right. So beautiful views always right up here. Absolutely yeah. amazing. Genesee Park, sometimes we see Buffalo out here. Right. But yeah, we're coming up to another on-ramp where it cuts the lane away. And some states mandate the actual line goes all the way through, whereas uh, Colorado doesn't. So Tesla Autopilot, base autopilot, fails every time with this. It goes, <laughs> and I'm like, how after years does it not get this right? Cadillac, boogie it wide open. Wow. I just saw him come on the on-ramp. Nice. He must have been mad in the whole time. There's no carbon left in that engine. <laughs> <laughs> so this is one of the trickiest corners of the drive, and throughout this drive, it gets progressively harder for the system. But this is a right tur or left turn in the right lane with an exit halfway through the corner. Yeah. So let's see how it does. I would say it, it hugs the right line more than I would like, Jordan. Yeah, it does. Which I guess could be okay if there's traffic to the left of you, but... Let's see what it does. It just dipped in. It just realized it's giving some acceleration out of the blue. My Paul Star would have taken that exit. <laughs> well, we'll find out. Stay tuned. Future episode coming. That was, I don't want to say perfect because it hugged the outside and halfway through it went, oh, I got to go this way. Yeah, but really good. Really good. Definitely, I would not have taken over for comfort. It didn't freak me out as a passenger, so. It's impressive tenacity, too, because we're running this test in spring when I-70 is out. As, like, it's worst condition throughout the winter. There's a lot of destroyed paint and, like, non-visible markings. And yeah. It's doing a great job. 
yeah, I have to agree. And I also really like, at least if the viewers will notice when a car comes up in the blind spot, I really love the blind spot warning indications. Yeah. You get them in the mirror and on the display. And if you have a EV9 equipped with a head up display, it shows you that there's a car in the blind spot in the head up display. It always just seems to be a bit too far to the right, even there when yeah. we picked up the light. Which maybe some people like, but I think it should just stay in the middle. It doesn't um, let you budge over in the lane. Does it, it does. It allows for, okay. I can just push it a little bit over here. You can see it's still allowed steering once I let go, it comes back. Yep. Um, and it also is supposed to scooch part of HDA2, uh -huh. scooch for large vehicles, which is nice, but it doesn't work maybe only about 10% of the time. Yeah. I very rarely get this to scooch in day-to-day -day driving. I'm impressed with the gauge cluster that actually updates the position of the vehicle like laterally in the lane. It's not just fixed in the center. It actually sort of reflects reality. Yeah, it just, it does hug the outside of it the lane. It knows the tug of the lane, that's the thing. <laughs> yeah, so, but yeah, I like the in-lane reposition. See, I can push us all the way until we touch the line and then it pulls us back over. No points deducted because I just forced the car over. Nice. But yeah, really nice system uh, in that. A lot of systems lock you in like Rivian Driver Plus and Tesla Autopilot and that's, I think, not fun. See here, we're staying to the left. It's not treating this as one big lot wide lane. Really good, really nice. Even with some broken lane markings here, incredible yeah this is easy this is so much better than the santa fe yeah which was also <laughs> highway drive assist i think one it was hda one yep but hda two man we and the thing that we notice with a lot of these systems is they're actually like the mercedes system for example did terribly in the gls but then amazing in the eqs yeah so it depends on the car that they're attached to as well which is why we try and run as many different vehicle types through this test yeah, we really should test a new Santa Cruz just to see how it's improved. Yeah, although no one really cares. <laughs> <laughs> it's a cool car. I wish we'll that was electric. We'll do a Rivian instead. Yeah, Rivian. It's been a couple years. Yeah, we need to retest Rivian. We need to run the latest FSD mm -hmm. uh, from Tesla, but that's also running the old 11 stack at the moment for highway. So we might wait until that gets updated to the 12 yeah. highway stack. We'll do my Polestar 2 later on today, but I also really want to see Polestar 3 with the LiDAR system. Yeah. How that does, because there's a lot of tech behind that. So I have seen like vehicles or Hyundai and Kia investing in self-driving companies, like their Mobus division, is that what it's called? Yep. Does like some LiDAR stuff and really cool advanced things. But where are they actually in getting the system whoa it just kind of freaked out a little bit there did you we feel that yeah disengagement no almost? no i didn't take over it's okay it was just a hesitation yeah, yeah. just just my confidence went from a seven to a three <laughs> real quick <laughs> with this five series right here in our blind spots so like, uh, but where are they in, in terms of getting like what's the next iteration after this yeah, what's HDA3? Well, they're not really like Tesla where they're like rolling out beta updates. To me, it seems like, you know, they've got whatever stack they have and that's what they ship in cars for years. Yeah, and I'm not sure that's the name of the game right now. I think you got to be a bit more aggressive in advancing your driver assistance. Of course, this is doing very well on the highway, but it still is requiring my full attention of monitoring the vehicle. Um, and I feel like we've been at this level of level two driver assistance for years and years. And only just now we're starting to see companies like Mercedes and BMW uh, break into level three. Yeah. which uh, the SAE says, okay, I don't have to pay attention under certain circumstances, um, or at least you have to take over with a warning. Yeah, a lot of people don't realize, like technically Mercedes system may be the most advanced on the market in a production car today. Even though it's very limited as to where you can use it. It's like Nevada and California, if it's sunny, if you're in a traffic jam under 40 miles an hour on a pre-mapped road. Yeah, so the real world, you may feel <laughs> Which is like, you will never find yourself in no a society of automotive engineers does <laughs> I, I actually think, as terms of a practical user situation, Tesla's system is by far the most advanced, but still is just level two, requires but hands on the wheel. it's much less elegant and failing. Uh, when it does. Anyway. Actually, I disagree. I think the new version 12 is really fine when it oh, fails. We'll now. have to spend more time with it. Yeah, I think yeah. they did a really nice job. With we need Max to have some po some positive Tesla time. Yeah, Max has been on this <laughs> negative Tesla kick, which is like fine, but like I'm getting annoyed with it. It, did, on, it did just say the speed limit. I got insurance of stock. So yeah, so the speed limit's indicating 45 miles an hour, but it's only for vehicles over 26,000 pounds GVWR. Huh. Yeah. But but I actually know why it's not changing, Jordan. Why? I set it to 65. 
Oh, and so once you, you make it change, it, yeah. it's actually really a good feature. Yeah, yeah. And now that we're back to the speed limit of 55, and it actually dumps to 45 here, uh, we'll see if it goes down to this. Then I think it's actually a, a good good solution. Yep. So yep. yep, here it goes to 45. Might be a bit dangerous to do 45 down this hill, but we're gonna. <laughs> find out as you can tell I was doing 65 still <laughs> we of course follow speed limits and regulation here but not everyone else does we don't have to say allegedly in this video we are following all of <laughs> yeah there's no allegedly at all this is speed limits are they making this a tri lane no this, this dips to two there's no one behind us so let's just see how it handles this merge with no input from me so two lanes coming to one it's hugging the right side which makes sense because we were just previously in the right lane that was super gradual that was honestly textbook, really good. Now we have the world barreling up behind us. <laughs> <laughs> it's scary. So it is scary this driving the speed limit. so slow. <laughs> yeah, oh my gosh. No one is going the speed limit either. No, Subaru just jammed on the brakes back there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, so we're, we're just doing our thing. I'm gonna guess that that sign said vehicles over 26,000 pounds, GVWR 45. I'm just gonna put it to 55 out of safety. We normally run 55 down this hill mm -hmm. anyway. So um, huge upgrade in terms of practical driving capability over the previous Hyundai Kia Genesis systems we've run in this test. Yeah, usually we'd have a lot to report on by now and we're just chilling. Only one driver takeover. And that was right when we started. Right when we started. So really enjoying this. Of course, we're regening on the way down. I have my charge indication here, which this vehicle can't regen as much as the other. Uh, yeah, only do. one motor, single motor rear, two hundred horsepower. <laughs> That's oh yeah. I've got my this button hooked up to my EV menu here. We're doing thirty kilowatts back into the battery right now. Cool. Very cool. This yeah, is pretty this good. Is, this is <laughs> See here, it's a little bit to the left. Didn't like that feeling. I would say, you know, certainly it's one of those systems that still feels uh, a little bit more primitive than others. Like I always feel like BMW systems do really well in this test. Super Cruise does really well in this test, but then again, Super Cruise doesn't let you do the corners. Yeah, it shuts off for a long time. Super Cruise has this now. So now we're coming into the really tough section, and it is taking the complete wrong line, and it's shut off without warning. Oh, oh bad. So minus three. That was bad. Yep. So it's good until it's not. And then you're dead. <laughs> That's how all these systems are, really. Like. <laughs> yep. So we normally run 55 through here again. Still, this is all typical for the test coming into a really tight corner with a bunch of bumps and weird lighting yeah it's doing well but it's really loving that wall over there jordan how's yeah, it feel it's i'm right next to the, the stones Not comfy with the cement <laughs> you'll notice it actually does slow down for corners though that's good yeah so we got down to i think 52 or 53 miles an hour nice uh, and it's actually slowing down preemptively for this corner too 52 that's miles cool. an hour on corner entry 51 50 and it is just going through it feels very natural little confusion mid corner you can see there nice r1s passing us very nice snowboard spec yep now we see if it takes our exit for us that's right it is nice to us when it takes the exit <laughs> for us saves the time but oh it's really close over here yeah it does just love the outside but it hasn't touched no it is using every bit of the lane though <laughs> it's and finding it, the racing line yeah but i don't think it's actually good because if you're in the left lane to run a right or a left hander mm -hmm. you're going to get real close to the right lane yeah. and usually you hug the inside lane so that gets two cars real close to each other i mean would it do that in the left lane yeah okay yeah i've, I've experienced yeah. it as well Probably so feel. here again 45 miles an hour but it does not seem to take our lane for us and this is where we exit so we're halfway through Nice. We've had, I would say, a minor fail and a major fail yeah. so far, yeah, but only minus four points. Attempted. Only minus four points. Now, yes. when we originally created this test, Jordan, we thought zero would be a perfect score. Yeah. Because the intent was, you would only be, you would start at zero, and you can only deduct when things go wrong. Because the assumption is that you make it through the, you know, route perfectly, but then it can earn some points at the beginning for some functional and software benefits. And we've noticed a lot of systems ending up above zero. Yeah, it's impressive to get a positive score still. And this is such a treacherous part of highway. I mean, it is the most challenging in the US apparently, uh, I-70. So it's, yeah, more and more cars are proving their capability on it. 
which we didn't think was going to be as promising. What we really need to do is we need to run an Ionic 5 mm -hmm. in this test with this same system. Because I think my gut feeling is they've actually adjusted HDA a bit mm -hmm. over the years. And this is the newest product. Yeah. And it's gotten better. Yeah. Just the rest of the software stack is substantially upgraded between the navigation and the infotainment screen. That's right. And while we're merging back on the highway, which is going to take a year and a half. <laughs> oh, let's see if we can make the light. This is where we have to, you know, this is manual driving, of course. Full throttle. <laughs> Come on, baby. 50, 55, 60. We're ripping. We got to get in front of some people. Okay, so here we go. I'm now on the brakes to get the speed down to 55 miles an hour. We're set on nav. When the nav is green, I think it means that it's following the speed limits of the road. Yep. And that would be plus or minus your deviation. Um, so we're back on this section. All cars seem to do worse yeah. on the way back than on the way up. Big pothole, went right into it. Quadra steer, Sierra Denali, by the way. Nice. Super cool to see one of those. So let's see what happens, because for some reason, these corners are always a bit tougher. We're slowing down in advance. It feels like we're drifting. Oh, there's a car on the left. Oh, no. It's so close. They were hugging our side of the yeah, way. Yeah, that's what I was saying earlier, <laughs> that like, you know, you get two cars close to each other. So this is, I'm going to say, editor's influence. Don't like when it hugs the outside of the lane and drives yeah. over every pothole, which you yeah. know, can't do much about that. But. Not many, does any car avoid potholes? No. <laughs> we just want to deduct one for that. I would say minus two, just because it's constantly uncomfortable. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. And this was the corner of death where they used to not have the painted lines and cars would just go straight. Yeah, they've repainted. They've helps. repainted. Oh, oh, no. It just goes straight. <laughs> no, no warning. Way. No warning. No, not, no, that's minus three. Not even a beep. That is insane. It's, it vibrated the steering wheel, but like if you don't have your hands on the steering wheel. Yeah. Yeah, no beep. That was catastrophic. You'd be looking at one ticket. Sorry. Your whole family. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I did not expect that to still be a failure of a corner. No. Oh, it's all repainted now. Wow. Is it just too sharp? Like, I, I want to know and why did it choose that line? I don't know, but I think maybe it was the Santa Cruz that did the same thing. Yeah, yeah, it must it have been. Well, yeah. We've had multiple cars. That was a bit scary. Yeah. That was. I was like, now they painted it. This is too easy to test. <laughs> Apparently not. And it just hugs the outside. Okay. So, yeah, they always do worse this way. Yeah. <laughs> Until the end, it's like boring. But yeah, the end is uh, okay. You get final thoughts or whatever. But wow, that was sketchy. Yeah. So what's your opinion on systems like this, Jordan, where they're practically pretty good most of the time, maybe lull you into a, a false sense of security. I use this system a bunch. You know, you can adjust the nav system. You glance at your phone. Well, that's what all the, all the Korean car manufacturers seem to have this kind of low uh, intensity, low nags system. Like everyone's complaining about, you know, the newer autopilot, although they've rolled it back a little bit with the nags involved. Um, Hyundai, Kia, Genesis all just like let you go for a while. And with a capacitive wheel, I mean, you, you just, just like, tap a hand and I could just like not pay. You just tape a banana to the wheel or whatever. It is. <laughs> there, there, there just seems like there's so much technology on the market today yeah. that is available and inexpensive to automakers to purchase to make these systems safer. And they've just said, nah. Yeah. And it's not overall. I really love the system. I love the capability of having lane centering with you controlling the throttle. I wish Tesla would do that. Yes. But it does lead you into that false sense of security, I think. Even when you're driving around town without the full suite turned on, it's it's you just don't know if it's gonna fail, man. You know, a lot of people in the press drives said the same thing. We were on windy roads in Sonoma with EV nines and they were just kinda all meandering through the corners and failing. I like how it was waiting for a gap for the lane change. Yep. And I did that on purpose because there was this Denali here. He moved over to make room for us, but that was great. That's well. Just sat there, asked for the lane. Yep. We're just doing that because of a truck. So yeah, on the press drive, I, are journalists talking about this problem? Not very much. There was a couple people that I talked to that mentioned it. Uh, and you know, I was with a journalist. They partnered us up a lot of times. And once I pointed it out, he couldn't unsee it. So I don't know how many people are looking for it. But once you recognize it, if you if you care about it, it's, it's really frustrating. 
I'd be really fascinated to see any kind of data on like how many drivers use ADAS systems, like at a minimum adaptive cruise and weight centering, because I know so many people in my life personally who just have never progressed beyond basic cruise control. That would be my mom. Yeah. My mom has autopilot, has FSD, <laughs> Got, will not use it. Yeah, it's usually a trust thing or a lack of experience. You know, with experience sometimes comes comfort. Uh, and, you know, we, we trust most of these systems quite a bit because we use them all all the time. Right, and we know when to take over and yeah. I let them do crazy stuff on camera to show people where the limits are. But in my day-to-day -day driving, uh, I would probably take over more than I have during this drive. But I think like people like my mom, I think, my mom's issue is she's not sure when it's the car's responsibility or her responsibility yeah. to drive. And that's not made extremely clear as to what, you know, we're in this gray period of the human and the car need to work together. Yep. Who does what when? We do have debris on the road, but it is in the middle of the lane. Yeah, what's it going to do here? What's the Model X going to do on autopilot? <laughs> <laughs> you got a gator. Yeah, let's see what happens. No adjustment. Perfect. Because it was in that. Yeah, it's, it's not like this. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, you're right. All the auto manufacturers and their press materials, you know, the, the sales pitch, it's like, oh, it's like symbiosis between driver and car. And I think it's the opposite. Not everyone really understands or recognizes. So it's more stressful sometimes to drive with these nannies than to just manually drive it yourself. Yeah. What's your impression on the distance settings? So we have four distance settings that we can choose from. Uh, I've never had an issue with the uh, depth perception. No. Of looking. This looks far ahead. Yeah. Responds quickly. You can of course dial it in. When a car pulls pulls away, you can have it get right on the throttle. What's your impression of using it day to day in traffic? I like having all the adjust the fine tuning adjustments. It makes the nerds like us happy a bit. And that is one reason I love that the screen shows you the cars around you. It gives you that extra sense of, oh, the car recognizes it's there, so I can trust it a little more. Absolutely. Some cars, well, a lot of cars have adaptive cruise control with variable distances, but they don't always tell you whether or not they recognize the car in front of them. And so you're like, okay, is it going to come right up on its butt or are we just going to go slam into it? So Yeah, I was driving the Model S yesterday and I had autopilot set to the closest and it does all a bunch of weird stuff sometimes. <laughs> and I just kept coming up on the car in front yep. and it like at the last second was like, <laughs> like, oh crap, there's something there. It's like, no shit, Sherlock. Yeah. Ergonomic nitpick I have with a lot of like lane or uh, whatever distance settings in these cruise control systems is that it's oftentimes a one button toggle when it really needs to be like dimensional where you can go up or down. Because it makes absolutely no sense to me that you can go with one switch from like the farthest following distance to the closest or vice versa. I totally agree, Max. It's a great point. And that is one thing that does bug me about the system is if I just want to go from distance one to distance two just add a little bit more i have to click click and click and take my <laughs> eyes off the road to watch this little thing here yeah, yeah. now if you have a uh, head-up display it makes it a bit safer um, but if i could just go plus minus that's that's the way to each do time it. you're doing that it's instantly changing things yep. absolutely yep and so yeah I, I totally agree that is an issue with this for okay. sure so i feel like now we're on kind of the boring section because this is a bit easier and this car has already basically proven itself we know the major issues but on roads like this it's very confidence inspiring yeah i mean once you once you get out of the tight stuff and you're in cruising territory it's awesome and i would say it very rarely messes up on straight roads but i think we do have to take note that when the going gets tough this does start to fall apart yeah and it just seems like they are behind other automakers that can do a much better job yep. of handling the tough situations with more confidence. Um, and, and the thing that I guess I don't like is that when this messes up, it's not communicating to the driver that something is messing up. So Max's point earlier, when we went straight on that right-hander, um, if you're just glancing down, if your kid's doing something and that is the moment that you look away because something's happening in the car, that's that's a matter of life or death if that's it just dings at you terrifying yeah yeah just did that exit pass through just fine so perfectly there yep now we're going to hit 65 since we should be set at the speed limit it should auto adjust there we go oh no it says hda plus it knows it's good to go i can click the plus button at least during that window of time uh -huh. but now it says automatically yeah. adjusting so i guess you have to be kind of locked in when this is all green yeah then it's doing it there's a lot of info to take in on the uh, system there. Yeah, the absolutely. So we're making a lane change through a corner with a slow-moving truck. 
handled that just fine. It is very far to the outside here. Yeah, that's a little scary. Oh, 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 oh. brakes. Oh, phantom brake for this guy. Oh. So we did get one phantom brake. I guess it's not really a phantom brake because yeah. we understand why it did that, but it didn't. The radar didn't look, or the camera didn't look through our turn. Or it had a moment of hesitation, yeah. Yeah, it wasn't that big of a deal. No points deducted, but it is, that was awkward. I, I can't say I've ever experienced that with the yeah. HDA system. <laughs> Jordan, to your point earlier about the like information density with this vehicle showing you a lot of icons and things, I think that's a theme with a lot of like the Korean vehicles. And really, I they say every manufacturer except Tesla and Rivian, uh, like, you know, you can criticize them for their minimalism, but I, uh, I do find like this can be really busy. If you just look at the gauge cluster screen right now, there's so many icons and even we don't even always know what's going on. Yeah, exactly. Like you, this has to all be green in order for it to be following yeah. the speed limit. If they expect you to read the manual. I, mean, <laughs> yeah. I have read the manual for this car. Actually. actually, I'd say maybe the best is like Ford, where like when Blue Cruise is engaged, it's so easy to tell, right? Because I mean, everything's whole, blue. Yeah, like that's pretty easy, yeah. Okay, so someone's on the shoulders of the car here. I can't move over, but it's actually nice that it's hugging the outside there. Yeah, sometimes it's useful. <laughs> <laughs> it's not good, but that was useful. But it still just goes through these sharp corners with a bit of, I don't know, confusion, I would say. Yeah, back to the poll thing. I think it would be interesting to see how many people, yeah, just change speed again, how many people actually use these systems, uh, but also the people who do use the systems, how many would actually use them on this stretch of I-70? I don't think there would be that many. I think a lot of people take over when the going gets tough. Yeah. And honestly, that's probably the easiest way to get through where you're trying to go and the quickest way. And I, I always use the Barrett Parkway as an example, which is a really nice highway in Connecticut, actually, where I grew up. And whenever I'm on the Merritt Parkway, that's like my racetrack. So I'm just like <laughs> ripping and I never use the driver assistance systems yeah. um, because I just want to get through traffic, get through the corners. We're at 20% state of charge, which is fine. And uh, yeah, I, I agree. So now it just raised up, but was there a sign or was I not paying attention? Oh yeah, there was, yeah. Okay. And now it goes back to 55. Why is it doing that? <laughs> <laughs> There's a Volvo XC40, or is it now called the EX40? EX40 as of recently. Yeah, that's stupid. <laughs> nice car, terrible naming now. Yeah. That's back when they named it properly, the XC40 Recharge. Well, recharge, I think, was always kind of awkward, though, because sometimes I'm in electric, sometimes I'm in plug-in hybrid. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. Recharge, yep. I agree, Max. Because there's XC60 Recharge here. Yeah. Maybe Recharge should just mean plug-in hybrid. Yeah. Don't know. We're not here to solve well, all those No one's even prices. recharging their plug-in hybrid. So. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> no one ever does that anyway. What's it going to do here? This is tough. We got a line going to the right, two lines to the right, to the left. Oh, it got a little confused, it, it, but then it corrected, it, corrected it so fast. That was yeah, nice. That, I would say that was actually pretty impressive. Well done. Yeah. Now I'm curious what Max's car is going to do, right? There. Yeah, this is going to be hilarious in the Polestar because that's a much older system. Yeah. I'll be amazed if that car makes it through an escape. Oh, it's shaking the wheel. It says it can't move over. There's someone in the blind spot. Check surroundings. I did. Uh, and then this person's attempting to let us come in and merge over. Oh, it's accelerating. There we go. It's going for it. It's going for it. And we are over. Very nice. That's funny. It was, well, it was kind of like two, not really competing systems, just one system alerting you of things as if you were trying to get over. Right, but it was it, it needed the alert. Yeah. Well, let's see the 65 sign now. Yep. Nice. Very nice. And of course, this is always one of the most dangerous sections on the way down because of trucks losing brakes. And, yeah. And now we come back to 55. What's up with this? <laughs> Who did the speed limits on this I road? I think they just forgot to block the 65s. That's funny. Well, at least it's doing a nice job. Yeah. This is like driving in Germany where the speed limit changes every 100 meters. Yeah, that's true. We got something in the road here. I'm just going to take over and merge around that. And it didn't even shut off steering. I, I mean, love in-lane repositioning. That's good, yeah. With Tesla, what you would have, and Rivian and others, you would have this false sort of load in the steering rack that yeah. you have to break through this point of resistance. And so you get all this, you get a lot of pressure in the steering wheel. Once it breaks free, you go, Err! Yep. And it's pretty dangerous. So who's it that allows that? It's uh, Kia, Volkswagen. You mean in-lane repositioning? Mm -hmm. uh, honestly, pretty much everyone. <laughs> all, the, all the existing automakers, Volvo, Polestar, Volkswagen Group, the entire brands. Yep. 
uh, Mercedes, BMW, they all let you. Yep. It's just uh, Tesla and Rivian that don't, as far as I'm aware. Yeah, I'd love Tesla to have a capacitive wheel because I feel like some Teslas, it feels like there's this very narrow window between wheel input to know that they're there versus wheel input to break it. Absolutely, absolutely. And always a scary view is to have a truck behind you on this section. With its flashers on. Right, with on everyone having their brake lights on <laughs> yeah. in front of you. That is one that you just get out of their way. The runaway ramp is closed. Trucks don't have regen. <laughs> right, oh yeah, today your brakes can't be on fire because yeah. the runaway <laughs> truck ramp is. So they have a temporary runaway truck ramp, which has people parked right in front of it. Oh. That doesn't seem safe. Yeah. Temporary, that's it, and then a work zone? <laughs> <laughs> so the entrance to your work zone is a runaway truck ramp. Well, that, yeah, the, the runaway truck ramp temporary one is the entrance to the normal runaway truck ramp. I don't really understand. Yeah, it doesn't add up. And we are so, we were a millimeter off yeah. that line on the right side. It's very awkward feeling. Especially for me over here. Yeah, you're really... <laughs> Just so I can touch it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so we've already deducted the points for that, but definitely yeah. feeling that for sure. Cooled seats working well, Jordan. That's lovely. Yeah, very nice. Yeah, you don't get the second row, but just a couple trims up, you start to get a lot of features like the heads-up display, the surround view cameras. I think the wind and the land. The land is the volume model, land, I yeah, think. Yeah, definitely. If you just want to get glass roof, heated and cooled second row, Yeah. HUD. Yep. I'm trying to think what else you get, but a bunch of nice stuff. 360 All-wheel drive. Yeah. I feel like price-wise, though, once you're at land, you kind of want to go to GT Line, whereas, like, wind, to me, feels like a better balance of value and features. Yeah, it could be. Uh, good podcast debate. Good podcast debate. <laughs> and also, keep in mind, like, dealers like Kia and Fort Collins, uh, they, they'll lease these things out, too, of course. Yeah. So now it just changed speed, but I didn't see a sign, unless uh, I'm really just yeah. not paying These will get the tax credit for uh, purchases later this year, once they get the Georgia facility running. That's right. And yeah. I would love to see that facility. Yeah, because this was built in South Carolina. Korea, yeah. but we'll soon have American production. You know, one thing I expected to have, oh, it was so close with this truck. Oh, oh, we're looking at the outside, he's looking at the inside. Yep. <laughs> oh, we're working with, with this much room here. But here's the exit. Here's the exit. See, he's on now on the inside and we're on the outside. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, we also ran one of those in the hogback with Super Cruise. Nice. Now, will it take our exit for us? It's thinking about it, but no did great okay so let's start tallying up the points how did this do max okay so we started with 16 points accounting for all of the features that it had 16 um, wow that's yeah, a great 16 start points. yeah great start however on the drive we had to deduct uh seven points and then on editor's input we gave one point for the uh leaving vehicle departing alert but we subtracted two for hugging outside of lane. So that's a total of eight points subtracted from 16, giving us a final score of eight. Yeah, I would say this did way better than the previous HDA systems. Still has some very safety critical issues, I think. I'll show everyone the lead vehicle pulling away warning because I'll wait to hit the accelerator pedal for this guy. Um, but what did the Santa Fe do, Max? Uh, let me find that on There's the, the leading vehicle. Ding, ding. So nice. Yeah. Yeah, Santa Fe was negative, if I recall correctly. I think it was like negative 27. <laughs> I think it was really bad because we just kept having to adjust in yeah, lane. Yeah. It just hit every line around the corners. Yeah, I like the leading vehicle departing thing. Just wish it did recognize the traffic lights. Yeah. The nice thing with Tesla is it'll go ding, even if you're not first in line. Yeah. And then you go, oh, okay. And then you honk. <laughs> right? <laughs> ding. <laughs> I can't find Santa Fe, but the 22 Santa Cruz. Oh, that's oh, what we meant to say. Yeah, that's sorry. The, the, the pickup truck. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That one was <laughs> not great. It got seven points to begin with, but lost 33, resulting in a final score of minus 26. Yeah, it was close. Okay. You're close. Yeah. 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 All right. yeah. So, yeah, massive improvement. Yeah, massive improvement for sure. So, nice work. Uh, I would say improving it, but I really can't understand for the life of me how such a large automaker, Hyundai Kia Genesis, leaves so many safety critical holes in their driver assistance system. It makes me nervous uh, as a driver of this vehicle, of yeah. course, if something were to happen to me or you guys when we're driving it, when other systems on the market that are readily available in cars that cost less money than this one can do so much more to protect you in a safety critical event. So it wouldn't stop me from buying an EV9. I would use this system all the time. I love that it's standard equipment in the vehicle. 
but I really hope the engineers start to take safety a bit more seriously on the driver assistance side rather than just add features. I would love to have Francie come out here with her VF8, uh, the VinFast, and see how that does. Because as I understand it, that's basically an off-the-shelf ZF system. That is, yep. So it's a ZF uh, driver assistance system in the VinFast, and we are going to run it in the Hogback pretty soon. Okay. Yeah. Jordan's got to go out and road trip that back. That's the plan. Oh, this guy's ripping. Nice. nice. Watch the EV9 oh, go, bro. 201 horsepower. Oh, yeah, he's not lifting. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this still floor. It looks good. <laughs> Come on, I'm still floored. We've smoked him. We've hit 65. <laughs> and we're not burning dual clutch like it would be in a combustion. That's right. <laughs> so, so there we have it. The Kia EV9 driver assistance review. My safety comments still stand even if I drive like an idiot. Yeah, with that score, more like EV8. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for watching. We'll see you on another one again soon. Bye-bye.